Now I would like to introduce the York International team. To begin with, I would like to introduce Eugene Lee, who is the International Student Ex Experience Coordinator at York International. As I mentioned before, I'm Sara and I'm a student coordinator and my colleagues, Anika and Gagan. We are all set to dive into the objective of today's session. By the end of this webinar, we hope that the students will gain more knowledge about the process of applying for a study permit, the timeline of study permit application, and also some documents essential for study permit. I would quickly like to go over the agenda for today. First, we will have a presentation by International Student Advisors and Immigration Specialist Team. ISA will talk about the process for applying for a study permit. Then we will have our question and answer session. Remember that you're welcome to use the Q&A feature throughout the presentation and during the question and answer time. Lastly, I will be sharing some upcoming York International pre-arrival webinars and events. Now I would like to introduce Dawn from International Student Advisor and Immigration Specialist Team. Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Sarah, for the introduction. Um, I'm glad to be here. My name is Don. I'm one of the International Students Advisors and Immigration Specialists at uh, York International. Okay, today I'll be um, going over some uh, important information about your study permit applications. And uh, we will do a, a brief introduction to York International Services. I'll provide you some uh, study permit application process. We will talk about the documents needed for these applications, the IRCC online application system and how to apply online, uh, the forms, how to answer the forms, how to go about uh, uh, reapplying once you receive a refusal. And we'll provide you some contact information before we uh, take some questions. So as you all know, uh, York University is a home for about 10, a little bit over 10,000 international students. And uh, for that, we do have um, a unit that will be uh, happy to assist you and offer you services that you need. This unit is called York International. So York International is a department within the university that is dedicated to supporting the needs of all international students, as well as domestic and international students who wish to study or work abroad. Some of the services that we offer in this unit will be a university health insurance plan, otherwise called UHIP. Uh, we have uh, events and programs happening throughout the year for international students. We also have a team uh, called Go Global that can assist you if you're wishing uh, to do an exchange program overseas. And of course, you can come in and uh, speak to international student advisors in regards to immigration related matters. So as I mentioned, uh, the International Student Advising and Immigration Specialists are here to help you with study permits, with questions about your temporary residence, visas, questions about your work authorizations on and off campus. If you have questions about your co-op work permit, if you, uh, if you are going to do an internship throughout your program, we are the people that you can talk to to get information on how to go about to get a co-op work permit. And of course, post-graduation work permit as well. Uh, we also hold, uh, we, we also will be having some webinar throughout the years, once every term for permanent residency questions. To contact an immigration specialist at York International, you can uh, send us an email via iadvisor at yorku.ca. We also have other options such as virtual drop-ins where you come in and speak to, uh, speak live, ask your question and a virtual uh, drop-in advising session. For more complex cases, we offer an in-person drop-in at 200 York Lanes. You can book one-on-one -on -one appointments. But please make sure that you use the YI event calendars to stay up to date with all the events that are happening. So as a licensed immigration professionals, we are authorized to provide immigration advice and represent individuals on Canadian immigration matters. However, as international student advisors and immigration specialists, 
we can only provide you general guidance, feedbacks for uh, specific situations, and we can help you review your refusals. What we can do, unfortunately, due to legality uh, limitations and liabilities, we cannot be your, we cannot be doing your in depth application review. We are um, we won't be able to do, unfortunately, reviewing, confirming supporting documents or confirming eligibility or admissibility. Immigration law is, as you know, a complex and, pro uh, and providing accurate and comprehensive legal advice requires complete understanding of personal immigration history. And for that, going into depth in, in uh, personal life cases will be out of sc our scope. And just a general disclaimer, the following slides were prepared by a licensed immigration professional in compliance with Section 91 of the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, the ERPA. This is not a legal document and does not constitute a legal advice. It is for the information purposes only designed for York International students. And as you know, immigration information may change without notice, and it is your responsibility to please refer to Immigration, Refugee, and Citizenship Canada, IRCC's website, for the most up-to-date information and to be sure you meet the eligibility criteria. IRCC is the authoritative source of immigration legislation, policies, and instructions and information. The information on the slides is current as of March 15, 2024. So, Study permit applications and process. What is a study permit? As you all know, a study permit is a required for any program that is over six months long, unless you are a permanent resident or a Canadian citizen. It confirms your temporary resident status as a student in Canada. You must maintain a valid study permit to be able to study and attend classes in Canada. If you applied from outside Canada, it will be issued at the border. So you, may, you do the application online via your IRCC portal. Once you are approved at the border of entry on the day of your arrival, you'll be issued a brown document. That document is called a study permit. Please put your best foot forward with your first application. Make sure you include all mandatory and supporting documents. Do not under underestimate the importance of this application, decisions, are up to the discretion of the officers. Nobody can guarantee you a result. And that is what the, the study permit looks like. Steps for applying. First, you need to gather all your documents and complete the forms. Once you do so, you will be asked for biometrics or medical exams if required. You will need to be monitoring your RCC accounts for updates, requests, and a decision. It's very important to keep an eye on your inbox. You never know when Immigration Canada will ask you for following up documents. Once you receive your final decision, if your application is approved, and we hope all of your applications are, you will receive a letter of introduction, and if required, a visa or an electronic travel authorization, depending on your citizenship. Applying from inside Canada. So who can apply from inside Canada? Only some people can apply from inside Canada. If you are a Ukrainian citizen, if you are a minor uh, in the secondary school, if you, your parents, or your spouses has a valid study permit or a work permit in the country. If you're not eligible to apply from inside Canada, please make sure you apply from outside Canada and wait for approval before making travel plans. You can submit, you could be physically in the country, but you will have to be submitting an application online called outside of Canada applications. If you have a study permit, can you continue using it? If you are in the country and you have a study permit, that is great news. Please check the expiry date and the conditions on your study permit. If your study permit isn't expiring soon and you have the conditions to work on and off campus on your study permit, you can continue to use it. You must make sure to update your designated learning institute number online before you start your courses at York. So if you are currently attending a different institution, a college somewhere in the, in, the, in the country, and you are transitioning to York University, the only step that you have to do before you start classes is to go online and let Immigration Canada know 
by providing the designated learning institute number of York University. If your study permit is expiring soon, or you need to change the conditions on your study permit, you must apply, unfortunately, for an extension before your current study permit expires. You should apply as soon as you get your letter of acceptance to York. How is the application different between the uh, previous ones that we noted? When applying from inside Canada, you apply for your study permit first. If you need a new visa, you will apply for it after you receive your new study permit. The IMM forms and the documents checklist may look different from those for those applying from inside Canada. Check your passport and expiry date. Of course, as you all know, study permit and visa can only be issued up to the expiry date printed on your passport. So we need to make sure that we have enough time on that passport before we apply to any immigration document. Now, gathering the required documents. These are the major components that you need for a study permit application. First and mainly, of course, you have to obtain a letter of acceptance from Designated Learning Institute. Usually, York will send you your letter of acceptance via my file. You'll be able to download it. You will upload the letter titled acceptance and visa letter as well to your application. And as uh, you've heard, as of January, 22nd, 2024, those that are applying for initial study permit will be required to obtain a new document. The document is called Provincial Attestation Letter. As of now, we do not have enough information to provide you about uh, how to, to go about obtaining this document, but this information will be available soon. We're hoping within the next few days. Second, you'll be needing proof of financial ability. You have to demonstrate your ability to pay at least one year of tuition fees plus, plus living expenses. Additional funds for dependents, if applicable. If you are traveling with a child or with a spouse, you have to have more funds for your uh, living expenses. And just uh, the heads up, the living expenses amount have changed recently as well. It was announced that as of January 1st, international students would need to show that they're able to spend $21,000, approximately around $21,000 a year for their living expenses. Additional requirements for Nigerian students express stream, please make sure you check if you are a Nigerian student. Third, study plan and letter of explanation. As some of you might know on the application online, there is a field called client information. In that field, you will be uploading a letter that explains to Immigration Canada where your intent and what, what your intent is, how explain how you will be uh, financing your studies, and where will you be studying. First, letter of acceptance and provincial attestation letter. How do you get your letter of, of acceptance from York? So as I mentioned earlier, you can find it in the my file. Verify your letter of acceptance includes tuition, start date, and the designated learning institute. These are the important information that Immigration Canada will base your study permit on. So you must make sure just before you submit it that your um, start date is included, the length of your program, and the tuition fees are listed. And just a heads up, letter of acceptance are issued only once. Under application status, under your My File, you will be able to find um, your accepted uh, offer. Under supporting documents will be a list of the documents you need to upload and a separate column indicating whether the documents were received by York. You can screenshot this page and include it to, uh, as part of the proof you have cleared your admission conditions. And finally, under the admission letter, you'll be uh, able to find a proof of payment receipts, decision letters, and the visa letter that you need for the application. What if your letter of acceptance is conditional? If you have a conditional letter of acceptance, you can and you should still apply for a study permit. That does not stop you from applying for your study permit. Full acceptance letters are not generally issued. In your study plan and the letter that you will be including to explain about your intention in Canada, you'd have to confirm whether or not you have a prerequisite courses, 
You have to explain that you have submitted all documents requested by the university to finalize your admission, such as transcripts. If you cannot do this, explain why and state when you will provide them. Please attach a screenshot of the supporting documents page from your My File. For a student director stream in some countries, such as India and Philippines, they are required to, for an un to submit an unconditional letter of acceptance in this case. You should apply through the regular stream if you have a letter of acceptance that is conditional. For ESL and prerequisites, if you must complete a prerequisite course or program before you begin your studies, your study permit will typically be valid for up to a year after completing your prerequisite. Even if your prerequisite program is short, you should apply for a study permit from outside Canada and wait for approval before traveling. You will be able to apply for an extension once you're done with your one year prerequisite. So, what is provincial attestation letter? As I mentioned, beginning January 22nd, 2024, most international students will require an attestation letter from the province or territory in which they plan to study with every new study permit application. York University will be providing important information and updates as they become available. Students can also visit the uh, FNK, uh, FNQs for more information and ongoing updates. Current international students in Canada will not need an attestation letter for a study permit renewals. So if you are currently in Canada and you have a valid study permit, please make sure that you submit, as we mentioned, an extension for the study permit before the expiry date. You are, you're not, you are not required to obtain a provincial attestation letter. Those that need provincial attestation letters are most post-secondary study permit applications, most non-degree granting graduate programs, for example, certificate programs such as in School of Continuing Studies and graduate diplomas. Anyone else not including this except uh, in this list, exception uh, list below. So who doesn't need a provincial attestation letter? Primary and secondary school students do not need an attestation letter, masters or doctoral degree students, if you are in Canada visiting or exchange students studying at a designated learning institute, you do not need one. If you are in Canada study permit and work permit holder, if you are an in Canada family member of study permit or work permit holder, so in other words, if your parents have a work permit or a study permit and you're applying for a new study permit, you do not require a PAL, and students whose applications were received before 8.30 a.m on January 22nd, 2024, prior to this policy. Second will be a proof of, second uh, important document will be proof of financials. So as part of your study permit application, you will need to show that you have sufficient funds to support yourself and accompanying family members if you have any while you are in Canada. Please take your time to sit down with your family to discuss your finances. Make sure you highlight what costs you will have, flights, tuition fees, housing, food banks. Where will your funds be coming from? Who is going to be sponsoring your studies and your uh, expenses in Canada? How often will funds be sent to you? Is it the beginning of every month, twice a month? What if there is an emergency, inflation or currency conversation, uh, convers conversion Sorry, are not in your favor? Please make sure that you have a plan B in case of um, any unplanned circumstances. While you may be eligible to work in Canada, it is meant to provide you with, uh, sorry, while you may be eligible to work while you are in Canada, it is meant to provide you with valuable work experience to boost your resume. You must be able to support yourself without relying on work in Canada. While there are some scholarships and bursaries available to international students, these will also not fund your entire education. So please plan accordingly. And starting January 1st, 2024, the financial requirements for study permit applicants has been raised from $10,000 to $20,635. So these are some tips for financial support section. It is very important to provide uh, clear documents and organized documents to demonstrate that you are financially equipped to pay for your educations and stay in Canada. To keep your application organized, we recommend that you write a cover letter for this section. 
listing all documents you are submitting with your application. This letter should include your name, date of birth, and UCI number, the title, proof of funds, and financial support, a brief suffer a summary confirming that you meet the eligibility requirements for having sufficient funds, a list of documents that you are providing a brief description of, and please make sure that you check your local visa office instructions guide for specific financial documents, documentation that is required. So do you need to provide proof of uh, paid tuition? You will have to check first your local visa office instructions. Even if you're not required to, to prepay tuition, it can, be it can help strengthen your application if you do. Paying tuition fees or partially can lend cred credibility to the fact that you are a genuine student with genuine intentions to study in camp. Depending on how much you pay upfront, it can also help to demonstrate to IRCC that you have the financial means to afford your education and living expenses in Canada. So what documents do you need to show paid tuitions? You can make a deposit of any amount using one of the two methods listed and a payment receipt will be added to your my file in the four or five working days. Sometimes this timeline is a little bit stretched to 10 days, depends how you're making the payments and where from you're making the payments. Your deposit will be posted to your student account and applied toward your fees when they are due. So if you make the payment overseas, check in four or five days. If you see that payment in your student account, then you can check for the uh, for the receipt under the My File account. Proof of paid tuition fees can include a receipt from your bank confirming that the payment was submitted to your university. You don't have to always wait if you are short in time and you don't have to always wait for your university to post your receipt, you can also submit the receipt that you received from your bank where you made the payment to show that you have made a payment to your university. So how can, how can I pay my tuition fees? This is a question asked all the time. And here is a link that will show you how to make the payments. There are two ways of making the payments through CIBC and Convera. Can you apply for a study permit before selecting your courses? Yes, of course, you can apply. You may choose to pay the estimated um, fee that is noted on your acceptance letter instead of waiting for those charges to appear in your student account. So the third document now will be the study plan and the letter of explanation that we have mentioned earlier. What is a study plan? A study plan is like a cover letter telling Immigration Canada what you are going to do. It helps establish that your true intentions is to seek a permit to study in Canada and not for some other reasons. We recommend that every student write a study plan for their application. Please make sure that you complete this section. The purpose of a study plan is to demonstrate to IRCC that you are a genuine student and that you have sufficient ties to your home country residence. Since the study permit is an application for temporary residence, you must satisfy the officer that you will leave Canada once you have completed your studies at the end of your authorized stay. IRCC has a wide range of decisions making power to decide what will be factored into this analysis. You should also be specific, factual, and practical in your study plan. And please don't forget again to check your local visa office requirements for any specific instructions regarding the study plan, such as questions you need to answer, a format you must follow, or a page word limit. So these are some guiding questions that we compile for your study plan. Why do you want to study at your university? Your letter will have to answer this question. Why this step is your education journey is logical beneficial. Why can't you do it in your home country and neighboring countries, for example? Why did you choose Canada? How your studies will help your employment prospects. Always provide proof or possible example letter from an employer who will hire you once you return to your country or a dream job in your country that you think you will be more competitive for once you obtain your education in Canada. And your letter will, will and need to include ties to your home country and residence. What aspects of your life bind you to your home country? Your family ties, friends, 
uh, the social network that you have? Why would you want to or need to return home after your stay in Canada? The uh, personal relationship that you have with your parents, for example, is something that you can um, use. Do you have family, family obligations, social relationships, as we uh, asked previously at home? Sworn affidavits normally can help as well. Do you have an existing business or employment you will return to? Property or assets. If you have any property, please make sure that you include it to show that you have ties to your country. Have you paid bonds to your government or scholarship funders to guarantee your return? Please make sure that you provide documentation for your claim. What is your career potential? Are your skills in high demand? Always provide statistics from a reputable source, such as your government or a letter from a potential employer. Other mandatory supporting documents will be your medical. Some of you will have to do a medical exam, depends on your country of origin. Um, please make sure that your passport is valid. You will, require, you will be required to take a visa photo. You might need to do biometrics as well. Any forms or other documents, please check your required um, local visa office instruction guide. What language should my supported documents be in? All documents must be in English or French. English and French are the official languages of Canada. If they are translated, you must provide a translation, a certified um, photocopy of the original and an affidavit from the person who completed the translations. The guidelines for translations are also listed on Immigration Canada's website. Do you need to do an upfront medical exam? You can find out if you need a medical exam using this tool. My good colleague Anika is uh, posting the link for you to check. If you have lived in a designated country or territory for over six months or plan to work in certain fields, mostly jobs in the medical field or working with children or elderly, you will need to do a medical exam. Depending on your country specific requirements, you may be required to do this medical exam upfront. Even if you're not required to do the medical upfront, you may be able to do it upfront so that uh, processing can be faster. What about biometrics? Biometrics for visas, study permits, and work permits are valid for 10 years. If you are not sure if when you have given them in the past, you can use this biometric check status tool to find out. Usually it costs you about $85 you will be asked, you will be provided with an instruction letter on how to submit your biometrics. You will have then to book an appointment at a VAC center to give your biometrics. If you have accompanying family members, your spouse, common law partners, and or dependent children may apply to accompany you to camp. Their applications can be made together with your application or separately after you submit study your after your study permit is approved minor children intending to study in canada should apply for a study permit no letter of acceptance as we said is required and it not require a provincial attestation letter spouses are eligible to apply for an open work permit depending on the program that you'll be attending so this will be applicable only for graduate students if you're an undergrad uh, student, your spouse may not be able to obtain an open work permit. If your company family members are not working or studying, they should apply to come as a visitor. So how long will it take for the application to, to be processed? Processing time vary by country. You can check online for an estimate, but due to a COVID-19 backlog, these timelines may not be accurate. accurate. There is a tool called Check Processing Times online. You can find out how long it will take for your study permit. The current processing time as of today is about 10 weeks, but this can always change. If you are a legal resident in a country with a student direct stream, you may be eligible to apply through the SDS for a faster processing. Do you have to apply online? Can you apply at the border or on paper? Only certain people can. For example, U.S. citizens, U.S. permanent residents, and residents of Greenland or St. Pierre and Miquelon are eligible to apply at the border. However, we recommend you apply online and wait for approval before traveling to Canada. We recommend that all applications be made online 
even if you are eligible to apply at the border. Can you start studying while waiting for a decision? For those in Canada, you can apply only, you can only study if you have a valid study permit and apply for an extension before they expire. For those outside of Canada, if you do not get a decision by the time your classes start, we recommend that you please request a deferral. Be mindful of the tuition refund deadlines. If you request a deferral before the deadlines, you will not be charged tuition fees. Your tuition fees will be posted for your upcoming term. What sources should I use for information? Please always use and only the IRCC's websites, official government of Canada's information or information provided by a licensed immigration professional. Should you hire a legal representative to assist you with the study permit application? You're not required to. However, there are considerable benefits of, to hiring a licensed representative who is experienced in this particular area of immigration law, including familiarity with the study permit application process, knowledge about how to proactively address common reasons for refusals, and we're providing you with a tool if you wish to find a legal representative, please use these tools. So there are a few uh, important concepts that we would need to go over. Letter of introduction, the travel documents, and the study permit. So once after you submit your application, hopefully, as we said, all of you get approved, you will be receiving a letter of introduction. This is also called a port of entry letter. This is issued to applicants outside Canada once your permit is approved. You will need to have it handy uh, on the day of your arrival. Travel documents, this is a TRV, otherwise called a visa. Depending on your nationality, you will need either a visa or an ETA to travel to Canada. Exception is US citizens. Your travel document is typically issued once your study permit is, once your study permit is approved, there is no need for a separate application from outside Canada. So the very first time you come to Canada, it will be issued an S-1 visa, student visa, a sticker that is placed on your passport. You will always need to make sure that this sticker on the passport is valid for entering Canada. Anytime you travel in and outside of Canada, please make sure that this document on the passport is valid. And as we said at the beginning, the study permit confirms your temporary resident status as a student in Canada. You must maintain a valid study permit to be able to attend classes in the country. If you applied from outside Canada, this document will be issued to you at the port of entry at the border. So what to expect after you apply for a study permit? Let's go back a bit. So as we said, once you submit the application for the study permit online, Immigration Canada will follow up. If you receive a positive decision, you will get a letter of introduction and a visa if you need issued to you, printed on your passport. If you do not need a visa, it will be an electronic travel authorizations. Once you land in Canada, you will be provided with a study permit at the border. So now we're gonna have a look at the online application system. And here are quick tips. Always use the question mark button to view additional instructions or examples. Please make sure you merge together and upload all additional documents under client information. So for these documents that you do not have a field for, you can write your letter and make sure you combine and merge the additional documents with the letter with a brief explanation what these additional documents are. Always check your letter of acceptance and passport for information. Make sure to copy the exact information. Ensure your forms are complete, accurate, and validated. If there isn't enough space on the form, attach an extra sheet. There is no need to print, sign your application if you are applying online. And please always make sure you answer it truthfully, especially for the background information questions. Provide explanation for any yes answers. Take screenshots once your documents are uploaded. Submission page, successfully submitted page. So once you see that, uh, submitted successfully submitted thumbs up on your page make sure you take a screenshot of it be sure to check your spam junk mail for correspondences from IRCC and regularly check your online account 
Okay, so this is what the uh, the tool, the online tool looks like. To sign in to your IRCC secure account, you'll need to have a GC, GC key, user ID and password. Then you will go over to apply to come to Canada, which is located in this section of your page. You will be asked to, uh, to answer a series of questions. These questions will determine the type and the, the, uh, the forms that you will be getting. First, to determine your eligibility to apply online, please click on visitor visa, study permit, work permit. You will be asked, what are you going to do in Canada? Study for how long? Answer the, the durations. Have you been accepted at a designated learning institute? Say yes. Your university is a designated learning institute. These questions and the answers to it are also found on your International's website under the study permit application webinar. And then once you get the study permit at the bottom, you click continue to go on to the next page. If you are admitted into a program where work is required to graduate from your in Canada, please see your letter of acceptance. If not indicated there, there is then answer no to this question, please. So on your admission letters, if you are required to do any field placement, it will state. If it does so, then please make sure that you answer yes here. If you don't have that uh, part of your program, please answer no. Do you want to submit the application for a family member? If you have anybody that's accompanying you and you want to do so, you can answer yes here. And this is your biometric question. If you have given in the past 10 years, biometrics fingerprints for an application to come to Canada. And next you'll be asked about the medical exam. This tool will determine whether you need to do a medical exam or not. And this is what your app, your main application will look uh, will look like. This is the main IMM form 1294 that you would have to uh, make sure to answer truthfully and correctly. You will be uploading your passport, your letter of acceptance here in this field, your general education and employment form, if you're required to, proof of means of financial support, all of your financial documents will go in here. And this is your digital photo and the family information IMM 5645 form. And this is the client information. That is the document, the third document that we were referring to that goes under client information. Please make sure that you upload your letter of explanation, study plan, and other supporting documents in this section. How do you sign the application? An online application is signed usually electronically. You have to type your name and answer a security question to submit your application. This will be your electronic signature. Do not print out your application form to sign it. You don't have to. To sign, just simply type your names here and information and answer your security question. Click Submit and you've signed your application. So let's go over the IMM 1294 form. Please make sure that you download the form first to your computer. Once it is downloaded to your computer, open it using the Adobe Acrobat reading, Reader. Use the information from your passport and letter of acceptance to complete this form. Make sure it is the exact spelling uh, of your name, for example, on your passport. And please pay attention to the passport numbers and expiry date. If you have a national ID, you will be asked to provide the information for the national ID. Your employment history is not mandatory. You must complete at least one line and can fill in your most recent education details instead. Please refer to the guide to help you complete the form. On December 1st, 2023, the new version of the study permit application form, IMM 1294, became available. Application submitted on or after December 1st, 2023 that use the old version of the form will not be accepted. So if you um, if you're using an old form, IMM, uh, the previous form 5704, I think I don't call me on that. Your application will not be accepted. You have to make sure that you you have the correct form in the application. So downloading your current forms, download the applicable forms by putting your your cursor over the document name. You will see a note that says open in a new window. This indicates that a form can be downloaded. If you see a please wait 
message, you are downloading a form. Click on the downloaded arrow at the top right to save the file onto your computer and open it with Adobe Reader. If you do not see the arrow, move your cursor to the top of the screen and it will appear. And uh, so some of the details that you will have to fill up in the uh, main form will be the Designated Learning Institute. This number is also found on your acceptance letter. This is the uh, DLI number of York University, starts with an O. You will be asked to enter your student number, the duration of expected studies, the start date, and the end dates of expected studies. You will also be asked to provide information about your the cost of your studies, the tuition fees, your board, your room and board, and how much funds do you have available, and who is going to pay these funds, who is going to provide you for these to, with these funds while you are in Canada. And also note, the funds available for you today must match the total amount of funds you are showing as proof. Example, if you have a combination of $20,000 in your bank account, $500 from a scholarship and $53,000 from your parents, you would indicate $73,000 and $500 in this box here. Sarah, can you click next? Thank you. So what if you have an admission questions? For questions related to academic, uh, to admission requirements, academic um, undergrad upgrade, sorry, for students who do not meet admission requirements, application deadlines, documentation required, language proficiency, you will need to contact international question inquiries at yourq.ca. This is the uh, email address. And most information is available online. Please make sure that you visit your YourQ future students. Always check my file for updates and documents. If you have an academic question, for questions related to enrolling in courses, program and degree requirements, please make sure that you contact your academic advisor. They will also be able to provide you with degree options, major and minor certificates, and program and degree requirements. If you uh, need immigration help, please make sure you bookmark this YI event, YI event calendar regularly and check it regularly. You will find a drop-in advising schedule, virtual and in-person. You will be able to connect with us. The information sessions on various immigration topics, the in-person immigration workshops where you can get real-time support as you make your application uh, to IRCC. Also, please make sure that you visit yorkinternational.yorku.ca for information and guides to help you. And you can always email us at advisor at yorku.ca. Always please make sure that you include your student number and all communications with York in the title. Expect um, a delayed response due to high volumes of inquiries, especially at peak times. The best way and the fastest way to always talk to one of us is by attending the virtual advising session. It usually runs every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 9 a.m. You do not have to book an appointment. You can just simply join the uh, join the session. The link to that session is, again, posted in the YI events calendar. And now we'll open for Q&A, Sarah. Thank you, Don, for all the information on the study permit. We hope you had the opportunity to get an insight into the process of a study perm for applying for a study permit, timeline of study permit, as well as documents which are essential for a study permit. It is time for our Q&A session now. You can type in your questions using the Q&A feature at the top or the bottom of your screen. So our first question is, uh, my daughter, who is a prospective student of York University, is currently doing her 12th grade in Mississauga on study permit. Her current study permit, which is for other secondary Ontario, is valid until 25th May 2025. We will be applying for a new study permit for her university in this April once we receive our offer from the university. If there is any delay in receiving the new permit, can we still join the university with the current study permit? Is that allowed at York University? 
also is the attestation letter from the province required in our case as she is already studying in Canada. I'll pass on this question to Dawn to answer the question. Great question. Thank you. So if, if, you, if your daughter is already in Canada and she already has a, a valid study permit, then she does not need an attestation letter. You can go ahead and please submit a study permit extension application before the expiry date, please. Once you do so, you don't have to wait for a decision to be made. You can start attending school as soon as you wish until Immigration Canada says otherwise. So you can just go ahead, submit the extension application before the expiry date. If you happen to be late and you submit the application, the extension after the expiry date, then that extension has to be a restoration plus an application to extend the study permit. You won't be able to attend classes by then. You would have to wait. Thank, Thank you. you for the answer, Don. Our next question is, can an international student apply for PR while studying? You may be able to apply for residency. However, there are requirements that you need to meet. If you meet the minimum uh, requirements, then you can submit a um, an application for permanent residency via the IRCC portal online. So next our next, next question is, hello, how to apply for PAL? There is no link on the IRCC website. Thank you for this question. So the provincial attestation letter, as of now, it's we don't have much information about it. We do not have the tool in place for the applications to happen. We're asking you to please be patient. It's going to be another, we believe in another 10 days, we will be able to uh, provide you with guidance. Students will be receiving information and updates on how to obtain the provincial attestation letter via email from your university. You can also check around March 28th. Uh, by the end of this month to see if there are any available information in regards to this attestation letter on the York International website. Thank you. Next question. What if you have a visa issued and you're still outside Canada? What is the next process? Also, do I have to mention to York that I have received the visa? Okay, so are you outside of Canada for... Why aren't you coming if you have a visa? Is there a reason why you're not coming? If you have deferred your start date, and for that reason you're not coming, for example, you need to let Immigration Canada know that you have deferred your start date. And you can do that via the IRCC web form. You need to fill up your information, update Immigration Canada with the new letter of acceptance that you have, and make sure you do that as soon as possible. And do you have to mention to your queue that you have received the visa? No, we do not ask you to provide us with the immigration information at all. You don't have to let us know whether you received the visa or not. Thank you. Next question. Before we move on to the next question, please take some time to look at some of the questions that have already been answered in the Q&A section. And our next question is, for example, if one is to receive a scholarship that covers the tuition fees, will the student need to provide uh, that he or she has enough in their bank account, including the tuition fees? So if you receive a scholarship that covers your tuition fees, obviously you'd have to show Immigration Canada some sort of document that states that you received the scholarships that covers your tuition fees. You will only then be needing to show that you have enough uh, funds to cover your expenses while in Canada. And as we've mentioned in the webinar, it will be best to show that you have at least the $20,000 and $680, so approximately $21,000 Canadian dollars to support your, yourself throughout the year. Yeah. Our next question is, can I work on my study permit before booking my enrollment? Of course you can. You don't have to be enrolled in classes to submit the application. All you need from the university is that letter of acceptance that you received via my file. Once you have that letter, please go ahead as soon as possible. As soon as you get all other documents and submit the application for your study permit to Canada. Next question, please. After getting a study permit and arriving at Canada, what must you do to get a permanent residence? Okay, so permanent residency is a very wide and complex topic. 
And for the interest of time, I won't be able to go through the permit residency. So I'm, I'm really sorry if I'm not providing you with enough information uh, on this topic. But generally speaking, some of the minimum criteria that Immigration Canada asks you to have before submit an application for permanent residency is that you have obtained uh, education that is qualified and at least one year of qualified or relevant work experience. So usually the work experience is very important along with the education, then you can go ahead and submit a PR application. Thank you, next question, please. Can you show us an example of the York letter of acceptance? Do we uh, do we have access to one, Sarah? Uh, we will, we will check and... not right now, okay. but let's see. We can check to see if we can uh, do so. Uh, at the end of this session, but we will uh, we'll let you know, Vivian. Thank you for the question. Next question, please. So the next question is, I recently realized that the order of my name on my university application and the decision letter does not match my passport and have corrected it with OUAC. I can see that it has been updated on my, my file portal but not reflected on my decision letter or visa letter, would the university be able to issue me an updated offer letter? I'm worried that if I submit the permanent application with the letter I currently have, it will not go smoothly because the order of my name on the letter would not match that on my passport or my, or my permit application. Thank you for the question. Please, I'm going to ask you to send an email to iadvisor at yorku.ca. Make sure that you use your student number in the subject line. I'll be looking after uh, your, your letter. I'll let you know via email. If you could please send us the email to iadvisor at yorku.ca. Thank you, Sarah. Next question. Uh, what's the provincial attestation letter for those international students for master's program used to apply for those outside Canada can use for study permit. If you are a grad student, you're not required to have a provincial attestation letter. You can go ahead and submit your application to Immigration Canada only with, with only the letter of admission. Thank you. Next question, Sarah. Can a student loan be used for financial support to IRCC? You can if you have a student if you have a student loan from your country and you want to use it uh, to show. Uh, financial support, you can do so. Yes, it is possible. Thank you. Next question. Should I apply with IRCC portal account or the IRCC secure account? Also, when will the attestation letter be issued so I can start applying for the study permit? You can apply for the uh, study permit using the only tool that is available, which is the IRCC uh, portal account, uh, the one that we showed you throughout the webinar. Please also refer to the York International uh, series if you wanna uh, check the instructions are also available on our website. The attestation letter as of yet is not available. It will be made available by the end of this month. Please check back uh, with York International. You can check the website. We'll be posting information about the uh, attestation letter online on our website. You will also be getting a notification via email, but in case you don't hear anything, you don't get that email, make sure you come back and check by March, by the end of March for the access station letter. Thank you, next question. So that's all the question we have for now. We will be coming back to the Q&A section after I share some upcoming pre-arrival webinars and events at York International. Thank you, Don, for all your answers. I hope it, it helped you to clear some of your doubts. So now we will move on to some of our upcoming webinars and events at York International. You can continue using the Q&A feature to ask your immigration questions. We will be coming back to the session again after the webinar, after I share about the webinars. Global Peer Program is an amazing program brought to you by York International. In this program, you will get a chance to learn about York from a student perspective and hear about experiences of current students at York. The program consists of two different events each month, which is the GPP Community Event and GPP Drop-In. 
So first we have our GPB monthly drop-in session where you'll get a chance to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a mentor who is a current student at York. If you're, an, if you're an introvert like me and does not feel comfortable asking questions in a group setting, it's, it is the perfect event for you. You can drop by the session anytime between 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. on March 21st. Our monthly community event is a fun virtual event where you'll get a chance to talk to a GPP mentor who is a current student at York. You will get an opportunity to ask your questions and concerns, and the mentors will also have a discussion about a specific theme related to York and Canada, like faculties at York, on and off campus housing options, things to do in Toronto, wide range of resources available at York, and many more. Health insurance is an important part of your life here in Canada. It is important to have information about how to access your health card and all the benefits you get with your health card and the extended health care plan as well. On April 3rd, we have our event called Understanding Your Health Insurance, where you'll get a chance to know all about the York University, sorry, University Health Care Plan, which is also called UHIP, as well as some wellness resources available at York. Faculty is considered as the academic division of a university. There are 11 different faculties at York and it is very important to be aware about your faculty and the resources provided by your faculty, which is ultimately going to help you in your successful academic life at York. On April 17th, we will have our another pre-arrival webinar, which is called Meet Your Faculty, where you will get a chance to connect with an advisor from your faculty and know about the internships provided by your faculty, student clubs related to your faculty, different colleges affiliated with each faculty, and also to get, get to know more about your program of study. Now, here, here's a York, oh, sorry. Uh, if you're looking for a fun virtual event to connect with other incoming international students and together learn about York and Canada, we have our YI meetup. You will get a chance to make some new uh, friends who is also incoming international students at York, play fun games, have amazing conversation, and the best part is you can attend the event from the comfort of your home. And here is a York International event calendar. You can find registration links for upcoming pre-arrival webinars GPP events and the YI meetup here. Calendar links is also shared in the chat. And here is all our social media accounts. Don't forget to follow us on our social media to know more about York International. Now we will look into the Q&A session again to see if you have any more questions. It is your time to ask questions to our immigration specialist or any questions you have about the upcoming events or about York International. I see we have one question in the Q&A section. Is it possible to apply to study permit without applying to PAL? I would like to pass on the question to Don. Thank you, Sarah. If you need a uh, provincial attestation letter, then you cannot be applying for a study permit without it. Unfortunately, you have to wait until you get that uh, provincial attestation letter without it. It's not possible. Thank you. I would also like to mention that if you have any questions after this webinar, you can join our virtual immigration revising drop-in sessions. Uh, and the link for that will be in the uh, York International Events Calendar, which is shared in the chat. And I would also like to share that if there is any update from the IRCC, information will be posted on the study permit FAQ website, which is also shared in the chat. Uh, there's another question in the section. Uh, please, uh, uh, I guess it's about the sample of letter of acceptance. Um, just give me a minute.
you will be able to view your letter of acceptance under my file. Or you can uh, just simply uh, browse the future students website. I believe there is a sample available for you there to see. Unfortunately, we don't have access to the sample right now. We did not uh, have the logistics to share the sample on our screen. So we apologize for that. Yeah. If you are a math, if you are a grad student, grad international student, you're not required, you're not required to include the provincial attestation letter with your application. I see another question. It's my daughter's current passport is until May 2025. If she applies for the renewal in May 2024, she might get her renewed passport in July or August. Can she apply for study permit after that? Since she's all she since she already has a study permit, uh, which is the other secondary, uh, which is valid until May twenty twenty five. Sorry, let just give me one moment to uh, read the details one more time. If your daughter is going to get the renewed passport. After May, then I suggest you submit an application with the current passport before May. Your study permit, as you've mentioned earlier, the study permit will be expiring in May 2024. Therefore, the best thing to do is to submit the application with the current passport. You will, unfortunately, you will be required to extend the study permit again next year around May time. Thank you, Don, for the Thank answer. You. If sorry, she has a follow up. Uh, I have a follow up question to that topic. The current study permit expires in twenty twenty five. Then it is okay. You can. Uh, you only need to change your DLI, Designated Learning Institute, once you start your university. You can do that online via the either IRCC web form or via your uh, account with Immigration Canada. You don't have to submit an application right now to extend your study permit. It's still too early. Immigration Canada would like you to submit an extension application one to three months before the expiry date. You will be able to attend the school with the current study permit that you have. To attend your university with the current study permit that you have. Thank you. We have a follow-up question. Thank you again for joining us today. And I hope we were able to clarify some of your doubts. Looking forward to see you again at a future event. Thank you all for being here.